All right, we're now recording and I wanted to welcome everyone to our um, Alaska Food Hub May 2021 spring training for vendors. Um, my name is Robbie. I have been um, directing the Food Hub for the past six years uh, and we will have Kira joining us here shortly. She's um, our new hire. She has started back in February and has been coordinating most of the um, Homer on-site day-to-day um, -day stuff. And then we have a couple folks uh, from Soldatna who may be joining us um, as well. So I did wanna take um, the first minute here or two, um, since we're such a small group, um, to introduce each other to each other um, and talk, let us know what farm and where you're calling in from. So uh, Deb, would you like to start out? Sure. So I'm Debbie Arnold and my husband, Mike, we have Arnold Family Farms in Sterling and we mostly do um, produce. Our, but one of our big things is English cucumbers but we do other kinds of produce and we also dry our kale collars chard and make it into a powder that can be added. Hello, to can you hear me? So that's our cottage part of it. Oh, uh, thanks, Deborah. Or De what do you pre prefer to be called? I keep calling you Debbie. Deb. It says Deborah there, but Debbie's what I usually go by, but Deborah's fine too. <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, thank you. And Kira, I, I can hear you. Um, can you hear us? Yes. Okay. Do you want to introduce yourself? I gave folks a, a little quick intro on you, but I'll let you talk for yourself too. I'm Kira Hardy. I am the new local foods coordinator for Alaska Food Hub. I've been hired on by Robbie and some other folks at Cook and the Keeper to um, help support this project of local foods and slinging goods to customers. Um, I've been here since February and I've really liked it. Awesome. And, and Kara has experience. She's worked at the Homer Farmer's Market for an amazing jam vendor, and she is a farmer herself. And so if you if ever see her around, give her a high five. Um, let's see, Barbara, I see, I see you on here too. Do you want to introduce yourself? Okay, how about Christine? Oh, there you go, Barbara. You just got off mute. Okay, am I off mute now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm Barbara and I have Anchorage Urban Farm in um, the side of Anchorage. And my farm specializes in chicken eggs. So I raise chickens. And a lot of my income and, and work and passion has to do with raising honeybees. Um, and right now I'm in the process of trying to put together a pollinator friendly part of my yard so as to be, you know, helpful to my honeybees, but also butterflies and every other pollinator that might be interested. And then lastly, I've raised bed gardens. So um, it's my pleasure to grow as many as I can. And for the most part, they end up um, at um, well, the food bank in Anchorage or other charities like that. And I say that because last year I was unable to participate in any farmer's markets. So that's where they, uh, my produce went and I was pleased to be able to donate it there. So this year I'd like to continue with my honeybees, my chickens and my vegetable raising. Awesome, thanks for being here, Barbara. Um, and I think that that's, we, we lost a couple people. It may be a tough internet night for everybody. So I am going to go ahead and get rolling and, and Kira's going to help me watch the, watch the chat just in case uh, folks have questions and I, I will talk on and on forever unless um, Kira stops me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, um, and just so everyone remembers that this is recorded. Thank you. All right, so let's stop my video and share my screen. It's always the fun part of getting rolling. Um, let's see. Share screen. 
All right, is everyone able to see that now? Yes, it okay. all looks good from here. Awesome, thank you. So um, you're all here for our uh, Food Hub producer training. Um, right now we have, uh, we operate out of Homer and we serve a Soldatna Nanilchik and um, Seldovia as well. Um, last year we had a trial um, food hub with Alaska Pacific University and it was specifically for their Spring Creek Farm cells. Um, and I'm not sure what their plans are this year. Um, several years ago, we also had a, a two-year trial um, in Anchorage and uh, that went well. We just did not have enough capacity to continue that um, given that uh, Anchorage has quite a few um, opportunities for buying and selling local food. But um, there are talks um, to get uh, food hubs going again in the Anchorage and Palmer Wasilla area. So uh, stay tuned for um, more information if, as it comes available. So tonight we're going to do just a real quick overview of our five years of operations. It's pretty, um, pretty cool to see how we've grown and changed over the um, last five years. Um, we will look at a little bit of feedback, which may help um, some of you farmers and producers as you figure out what you want to do on the food hub. And then we'll uh, review the training documents. So if you've attended these before, it's, it's pretty similar um, to what we've done in the past. And then at the end, we can open up um, for specific questions. And if you have anything you'd like us to troubleshoot with you, um, if there's time, we can do that then. And if not, um, Kira and I are always open to um, meeting up with you on the phone or on a Zoom and helping you um, figure out any sort of issues you might have. Um, so just a, a reminder or, or new information for those who haven't been here before. Um, the Food Hub started with uh, USDA funding uh, local food promotion program. Um, just a side note that, that those grant programs are open right now. So if you end up getting really interested and you want to start your own Food Hub or have your own ideas for some projects, um, be sure to check those out. The, um, they're not due until late June, so you still have um, quite a bit of time. So we've had a lot of partners. I want to, I know that uh, Kira and I are on staff here and we have a, some Soldatna help, um, but we really relied on a lot of partners to help um, grow and keep this thing going. So um, just a, a big shout out to Homer and Kenai Soil and Water Conservation Districts. They've been integral in spreading the word to both farmers and customers about um, the Alaska Food Hub. And also a, a big shout out to uh, Smoky Bay Air and Soldovia Village Tribe. They've been integral partners on our uh, uh, getting, getting our fresh food over to Soldovia. Um, most of our users are individual buyers and then very small businesses. So like um, bed and breakfast or caterers, that kind of a thing. And then most of our producers are farmers. Um, we have a handful of fishermen or value added fishing products. Um, our cottage food um, products have grown quite a bit since um, we received a variance from the DEC. We're actually the very first online business to be able to sell cottage foods legally in the state. Um, so that has, we've seen quite a bit of growth in that area. Um, we have a shellfish grower and then um, a handful of non-food products as well. Um, they don't seem to sell as well on the Food Hub, although we have a a couple of body care product producers that um, that have had some some semi decent success selling those items on the food hub. Um, here's just a few pictures. This was from uh, last year when we when we shifted a lot to meeting uh, social distancing protocol. Um, 
it was actually a really amazing year because we saw quite a bit of growth. I think the, the pandemic um, really helped highlight uh, for people awareness around where their food comes from, but also rallying around our producers as they saw lost sales from restaurants, closures, events, ending, those kinds of things. So um, we'll get into more of the growth information here in just a little bit. Um, I did want to make sure everyone knew um, where our website was, alaskafoodhub.org. Um, the shop, the marketplace, that's where you would see what's for sale. Um, and the become a vendor, that's, uh, if you want to become a vendor, that's your, your landing spot there. And, and we'll go into more detail later. Um, these are our operation days for the year. Uh, again, I'm not really sure what's um, happening for Anchorage, if, if APU is going to do that uh, trial again or not. But um, we are planning to run Homer um, until the till right before Christmas. We opened up the earliest ever this year um, in February, um, mainly because we got a lot more vendors that had shelf stable products. So, um, you know, we, we're focused on farm and local food products, but you know, we had uh, vendors like Two Sisters and K Bay Coffee and a lot of the uh, chocolate and seaweed products that were shelf stable that al allowed us to um, be open that early and, and also our cottage food producers. Um, in Nanilchik and Soldatna, we'll go through mid-October. This is mainly because our uh, van is unable to travel once it gets snowy. Um, and then Soldovia, um, we will we'll end in um, early October as well. Uh, <coughs> oh, Deb, Debbie, I see your Arnold family farm on here. Um, so we did update this page. This, this is what our, what we call our online farmer's market looks like. So each of these photos here, um, you can see uh, Arnold family farm. That kind of represents a virtual farmer's market booth. Um, and then when you click on it, um, like the image at the bottom, you get a couple more pictures and you get details about the business, their farming practices, really anything that you wanna put in there. But there's also contact information, which is uh, really important for our, um, our, especially for our cottage food tracking, but also if folks have specific questions about any products. Um, this is what our, um, our ordering platform looks like. You can uh, search by product, you can search by producer. Um, each of these you can click on and get more information about if the farmer has provided more information. Um, so I've seen, you know, if someone clicks on the rhubarb, there may be a great rhubarb recipe. Um, and then this drop down, it shows you all the different quantities, weights, whatever, the however the producers organize that, um, what the price is. And then um, of course the farmer is listed there as well. So after someone orders, they receive an order confirmation. It breaks down um, all the items you ordered, who you ordered it from, the cost, the tax, any sort of discounts. Um, and that sort of thing. And then the day of the Food Hub, bright and early in the morning, so it's at the top of our customers' email boxes, you get a pickup reminder just to, hey, don't forget your order. Um, and then our ordering cycle. And I know, uh, just a side note, I know that I'm talking pretty quick, but um, all of this will be recorded and we'll, we will post the PDF um, on our website shortly, uh, probably by tomorrow. Um, so you can dig in this a little bit deeper. Um, and anyway, our ordering cycle, we start on Fridays at noon. That's when we hope all of our uh, farmers and producers have their uh, products listed before noon, just so when customers sign on, they can um, order right away from you. Um, you can also add products or anytime while that ordering 
period is open, but we find, uh, you know, the people that come on right at Friday at noon aren't always checking later to see what, um, what is listed. But that being said, um, this has been used by farmers market vendors, you know, they, they go to the market Saturday and then they figure, oh, I have, you know, 15 pumpkins left over or whatever. So they can always go back and add more products. So on Monday, our shopping period closes at 10. Um, shortly thereafter, um, our vendors receive what's called a pick ticket. And that lets you know what was sold, um, how much and which location. So either Homer or Soldatna. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday morning, you can get um, get your products together and then we do um, delivery on Wednesdays. So um, this is actually, we Homer, we are actually open at 1030. I have not, um, I missed that update. And then in Soldatna, um, two to 3.30. And then our pickup is actually three to six. So we, we have tweaked these a little bit from last year. So I will make sure that's updated before we put it on our website. Um, here's just a few more pictures of our, of our amazing uh, farmers. They just all happen to be women, which is uh, never a bad thing. Um, we have, uh, we sell flowers, roots, uh, animal products, eggs, all kinds of things. Um, so this kind of, uh, this next section, we're going to review really quickly um, some of the stats over the past five years. Um, this is a breakdown of total customers registered over the last five years. Um, all, just over half of the folks are in Homer, um, then followed by Soldatna, which is about 30%, and then our smaller areas. Um, that Anchorage is based off of the trial and then that we had last year and then the um, other pilot we did a few years back. This shows our vendor participation. Um, last year we had the most vendors we ever had um, total and in both of our locations. I would, this gives you an idea of the type of vendor. So uh, like I said, we had uh, mostly agricultural products with a handful of um, craft and then prepared food was uh, second to the agricultural products. So things like kimchi and breads, um, that sort of thing. Um, this shows our sales by product type. Um, Again, produce is a, is a big one for us, followed by plants and flowers and starts. Um, meat is also up there, um, seafood. And then I did the same thing for our 2020 sales. And I, I'm going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison. But um, last year, we really got a lot more diverse in the products that we sell. There were more quantities. Um, more types of things. So here's our side by side. Um, you can see produce shrank a little, the flowers grew, um, we have added beverages, that sort of thing. And then our uh, sales um, by location. Um, you know, it was it was interesting to see between 2019 and 2020 that our Soldatna percentage of sales grew by 8%. So, and, and Soldatna has shown tremendous growth um, since day one. Um, and, and Homer has, has also steadily increased. So this is our overall sales for the uh, full five years. Um, and it looks pretty similar to our 2020 sales. Um, this is a fun one to look at. Um, this purple here, represents 2020. Um, you can see how much we grew. Um, our 2020 sales were just over 151,000. Um, in the four previous years before that, those sales were 164 combined. So um, we grew almost four, just over 400% since um, year one. Um, and if you look at just Soldatna, that has grown almost 
Um, and then this final note down here, um, we do provide transportation from Homer to Soldatna. We also provide it to Nanilchik and Soldovia. Um, the reason we did this when we first started the food hub, we did not provide transportation and um, we saw lower sales, um, less diversity of products. And so um, you can see from year one to year two, sales almost doubled in Soldatna because we did provide um, that transportation of products. Um, I just want to give you an idea of our top selling products. Um, and we, we break down categories of vegetables. So if we just had produce uh, listed here, it would definitely be number one, but we did want to break it down a little bit more for you. So this breads and baked goods, that includes uh, both cottage food and stuff made by um, brick and mortar places like Two Sisters Bakery. Um, just another fun little graph um, to show our, our tremendous growth um, during, the, during the pandemic year. Um, looking at sales records um, between this year and last year, um, it looks like this trend will, will hold steady, um, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, but um, hopefully right around the same level. Um, the other thing uh, we track is our average um, orders per week, but also the average um, total spent um, in Homer. Um, we have been holding steady right around the 24, 25. And then last year, um, we averaged about 69 orders per week. And they were about almost $10 more per week than the year before. In Soldatna, that grew to um, just over 27 with a, a, a larger um, a larger average total. So just to review our costs, um, we, you know, there's a lot of things our food hub could be doing. Um, they all cost money, they all cost capacity. So right now, while we're we're seeing if this growth um, holds steady, um, our our goal is to keep costs low so we can keep costs low for our customers and our producers while being sustainable. So um, we have staff, our site managers like um, Kira and David and Caitlin. David and Caitlin are in Soldatna. Um, we have myself that kind of oversees the whole project and looks at different things like partnerships and grant funding. Um, and then we have a driver, um, Ben, who also helps with our aggregation. Um, we do rely on a lot of volunteer help, um, especially in Homer to help us aggregate the products. Um, we usually pay them in Food Hub credit, which helps support um, bigger sales for our producers as well. Um, we have a vehicle and insurance, software, some advertising, infrastructure, um, like our uh, cleaners and tables, things like that. We have bookkeeping um, and then uh, printing computer, those types of costs. So um, let's see our revenue sources. In the past, we've had some grant funding. Um, we, we have an active grant out right now looking at purchasing a new food hub van so we can um, possibly go longer. Um, we have membership fees. Um, we have a, it's a sliding scale for customers, so people can pay a dollar, or they can pay a hundred. It's it's no difference. It just um, lets folks can figure out uh, where they want what what they want to value this at, and what they what their own budgets will allow them. And then our producer uh, fee has always been forty dollars a year. Um, that hasn't changed. And then we have our uh, support from other organizations, like I mentioned, Smoky Bay Air uh, provides up to 100 pounds of free cargo every uh, week over to Seldovia. We have volunteers, and then we have our product markup that is um, between 18 and 25 percent. Um, the 18 percent is on our higher value products like our chicken, proteins, fish, that sort of thing that um, is a higher value. Um, this breaks down our income. 
um, again, we've had um, almost a 400% growth in our income from day one to now. Um, we are just now, um, last year, covering our, or at least most of our really tangible costs um, for the food hub. Um, so that's a, a great place to, to be as we, we look towards the future and just hope, um, hope again that this holds steady. Um, so why a, food, why a food hub and why did Cook Inlet Keeper get involved um, in the food hub? Um, so we at, at Inlet Keeper, we're, uh, at least in my part of that world, we're looking to create more resilient communities that can take care of themselves, that have strong economies that are not solely based in um, extractive, uh, econ uh, extractive industries. So um, also we see a great, um, a great opportunity for keeping uh, some of our hard earned money that's spent on food. So almost $2 billion is spent on food from outside. So looking at ways to keep more of that um, money local. Um, and then also reducing our food miles and our carbon and footprint. Um, I won't read all of these to you. Um, I just wanted to make sure you had the information you can go back and look at, but um, customer feedback, people like that it's a kind of a one-stop shop. Um, they really like um, the variety that they can get on the food hub. You can get enough to make uh, a full meal if you wanted to off the food hub. Um, they like the, the newsletter and the social media, which I, I will just note this year, it's gotten a lot better because Kira's taken over it. Um, saves time and it, it, just the convenience, um, I guess is what comes comes uh, up often. Um, for improvements, um, we, are, we get quite a few requests for other locations on the peninsula. And we, we are starting to look at uh, what would it take for us to get food, say to Girdwood and to Seward. So we've had, we've had requests um, around that. So we are looking at it. Um, we just need to make sure there's enough quantity to fulfill all that and to um, make it worth um, the costs involved. Um, so our benefits to, these are benefits to our uh, producers. Um, the hub covers all the credit card fees and we do collect sales tax um, and, and remit that to the borough. There's lots of tracking and reporting. Um, all the sales are guaranteed. The software is straightforward. Um, once you get the hang of it, um, there's definitely some learning curves. Um, and then we provide different educational opportunities and uh, transportation between some of our locations. So our vendor feedback, um, so we get this feedback. We do uh, both customer and vendor surveys every year. And we look at um, very similar data points every year. That's how we can track our growth and see areas of improvement. Um, so for our, our vendor uh, feedback, improvements include they want more training with the software. So as I mentioned earlier, um, Kara and I are always happy to get on the phone with you, get on a Zoom, um, try and troubleshoot. Um, we do the same thing with our software providers whenever we get stumped as well. Um, Vendors would like to see more advertising, more customers. Um, some complain about the markup percentage. And just to let you know, um, our anyone who sells through the Food Hub is able to set their own prices. So whatever you put in that you want to be paid is what you will be paid. And the customer only sees the um, fully marked up price. Um, folks have also mentioned transportation needs to go multiple ways. Um, we are dealing with uh, limited capacity right now. Um, in order to go both ways, we would need a second van and a second employee. So we just are not at that level yet. Um, like I mentioned, we were um, just now able to um, cover our own costs, but stay tuned in the future. Um, if we are able to add 
um, Girdwood and Seward, we would we would definitely be adding um, that transportation piece for our Soldotna producers as well. So what works, um, you know, most are satisfied with the support. Um, they get to spend more time at the farm um, and sales have been growing and our drop-off days were more streamlined last year. So we did work really hard on trying to get folks in and out of the door as quickly as possible. Um, to reduce any possible um, COVID situation. So uh, yeah, it, it was nice that um, people noticed that um, things were running a little bit faster. Um, these are highlights. Like I said, 2020 was a stellar year for um, a local food in general, but especially for our food hub. Um, we had tremendous growth. We had um, a 33% growth in customer signups are, we made almost 100% more in memberships paid. And I, I think that's mainly because we had more customers. Um, we had uh, the most vendors ever, most product categories. It was our longest seasons, both in Homer and Soldatna. We had great volunteers. Um, and then we streamlined everything um, to be online. So all of our vendor membership payments, applications, trainings, everything was online. Um, but overall, the uh, for our five years, we've seen increase in sales every year. We got our cottage food variants through the, both the DEC and when we were having our trial a couple of years ago in Anchorage, we, we got the same variants through the Muni. Um, we had a uh, farmer's, at least in Homer, we cross promoted um, with the farmer's market to give uh, folks there that did not wanna shop. Um, either they couldn't wear masks, they didn't want to be in the crowd, they don't like the crowd, whatever reason it was, um, we were able to work with them to push customers towards the food hub as, a, as an alternative. Um, and then our transportation has increased um, sales uh, for Homer producers, um, and then also has provided that consistent base for our Soldatna producers to grow off as well. Um, and yeah, we, we've gotten lots of folks around um, the state as well as a couple in Canada that have reached out to us um, and we've been helping um, helping provide our story to them as they, they think about building out their own food hubs. Um, so I'm gonna see if there's any questions before I move on, we'll get into the, the uh, vendor training now. I just have a comment mostly. Yeah. I'd like to add was that, you know, as our population is growing and we have new farmers um, coming into the scene, I think that this uh, service, like the Food Hub, is such a unique opportunity to, the, to be built into farmers' business plans and that it's a growing thing. So, um, something to be recognized and planned for. Yeah, thanks, Kara. That's a really, really great addition. And um, it's great to include in your, your business plan, but also the Food Hub is really great for smaller farmers or hobby farmers or as well. We have all kinds of farmers on our Food Hub from, you know, someone farming nine acres to someone with just, a, you know, an extra high tunnel or a really great bumper crop of zucchini or tomatoes. So um, you can really use the food hub in, in a variety of ways. Um, so we're going to move into our vendor training. So we'll talk about how to get signed up, um, how to use the website, um, where to find the training videos within our software. We we found out pretty quickly that you know we could we could look at these videos, go over them with you, but unless you are watching them and trying to do what the video is teaching you to do, um, it really just doesn't stick until you have that hands-on um, trial and error. <laughs> um, so I'll show you where those videos are, and then we can always uh, come back and 
do some specific tweaking with you on anything you have um, questions on. So I'm gonna jump into our vendor training. Let's see if I can get my computer, there we go. Um, just wanted to post these days again. They are posted on our website and our marketplace. Um, and you know, we may we may end up adding Anchorage if APU um, comes back for their trial or if anyone else um, want, approaches us about a trial. So on our website, alaskafoodhub.org, um, at the top you'll see a, a section called uh, become a vendor and then our the drop down shows you vendor checklist or producer checklist so that's that's the main place you're going to find all this so um one of the first steps is filling out the application it's a it's a google form you'll get sent a copy of whatever you put in um and that's how we'll we'll get started so um yep yeah, our I guess the first step is really just looking at the policy and a, agreement manual just to make sure that um, we're all on the same page about drop off, if there's problems with your products, all that kind of stuff. It's a it's about maybe a 15 page, um, pretty light reading. <laughs> um, and then if you're if you're down, if you agree with everything, you feel like the food hub's a good fit, then you can move on to um, the application. Um, the third step, um, so if you have products that uh, require certain uh, food safety handling, well, all of the food requires um, safe handling. So it's up to you to um, know, those, uh, know those requirements. Um, and then also while you're doing the application, you can pay your membership feed. And so your memberships are good for a calendar year, which is unlike our um, uh, customer memberships, which are good for a full year from the time you sign up. Um, so the other, the other parts, um, you're going to need to get uh, the Food Hub any permitting. So if you are selling cottage food, you'll need a food workers card. If you are selling Oysters, you need a, um, other permitting. Um, insurance, insurance is required on any food product that requires DEC permitting. So um, our oyster vendor has liability insurance as well. We have a new salmon cake vendor that's coming on and they have pro product liability insurance. Um, and then we will need a copy of your W-9. Um, we cannot pay you until we get a W-9 from you. Um, so um, yeah, and P just a little reminder, folks are paid out um, monthly um, and we, we will make out your check to whatever you put on your W-9 form and that's where we will mail it to. Um, the last thing we need is um, two photos uh, so that we can use for your profile. Um, and so then after all of that is done, um, you will get an email from us that says, hey, your producer account has been set up. Um, we'll send you a getting started guide and then you'll just sign in, uh, review all the videos and manuals. Those are under the, the all important question mark within your producer account. And I have photos of all of this coming up soon. Um, and then, like I said, trying, try setting up your profile, add products, um, and just try doing what they are uh, showing you to do. And there's nothing that you can do wrong that we cannot fix. So if you feel like you made a huge mistake, just give us a holler and um, Kira and I can, can help you um, get back on track. So um, our website, like like we showed you earlier, um, shop the marketplace. This is where all of our customers go. It opens right up into uh, the marketplace so people can order right away um, if we're open. If we're not open, it gives you a message letting, letting folks know when, um, when the marketplace opens. Um, so the other piece I wanted to make sure you guys knew the 
become a vendor tab at the top. It has this drop down um, from the producer checklist um, that has everything you're going to need. Um, the policy manual is also linked on that checklist. And then the farmer education opportunities, that's if we have any um, webinars or our partners have any um, events coming up, we like to share that with everybody. Um, this is what our checklist looks like. It takes you step by step. Um, this number one, we will be replacing our um, producer meeting with our vendor training, um, or no, we'll be replacing our vendor training session from 2020 with this one, and that should be up by tomorrow. We'll have both the video recording and the PDF for you guys to look at. Um, policy manual, again, application, uh, your membership fee and any permitting, W-9 and two photos. So it sounds like a lot once you get started, it's, it's not too much though, hopefully. <laughs> um, the other step you need to do, you need to actually sign up. Um, as a on our software. So from our um, from the shop the marketplace, it uh, you will see this sign up tab. So you can sign up and from there that's how we will create your producer account. Once you get the email that says, hey, we've set up your producer account, you can log in, yada yada yada. Um, the biggest, um, the biggest question we get is, oh, I've tried to sign in. So we have a login here. This login is just for customers. At the bottom, you'll see the producer login. So if you log in and you're not, uh, you can't figure out what's going on, um, that's usually 99%, um, that's the problem. So be sure to log in at the bottom of that page under producer login. Um, once you get inside, um, this is what uh, your uh, your main landing page will look like. On the left-hand side, you'll have some more options, um, which I'll show you in just a second. But uh, this question mark, that's your producer guide. That's where you're, you have your training videos. They also have a written instruction in, in case you learn better that way. Um, so whatever works for you, that's where you... Um, will go. This is what it looks like. Um, so you're going to try looking at um, all the different tabs, the, the getting started, um, your adding products, managing orders. These are all um, really important things to look at. The, the videos are, are pretty short, maybe three, four minutes each. So um, if you spend some time learning it, um, it will, it will pay off um, in the long run as we get into our busy summer. So a lot of our farmers like to go ahead and uh, set up all the products they think they're going to be selling for the year, go ahead and get those added in. And then when it, when it comes harvest time, um, folks are ready to rock. Um, we talked about the uh, uh, producer profiles already. Um, make sure you get us two photos. Um, they will be cropped in a square. Um, sometimes if you send a vertical one, I can, if it's a logo, I can format it into a square to fit the whole um, logo in there. But um, uh, th that's the only thing you cannot set up yourself on your producer profile. For some reason, the software makes um, Kira and I set those up for you. But um, you can put in all your own contact information about us, practices, all of that. And then you'll see at the bottom here, um, Twitter Creek Gardens, um, when, um, when they are active, they list all the products that producer has for sale under their profile. So that's kind of a neat feature for our customers. They, they read someone's story and they're like, oh, I like, I like what they're doing. And they can click on products um, immediately and order from them. Um, so using the online training tools, um, your, after you set up your profile, your next step would be to add products. So, um, my best advice is for you to watch the video and then try and do what the video says. So, 
under this um, add products for sale, you can create your own listing. But before you do that, we really want folks to search our database. At this point, we have over 500 different items in our database already. So you can add those um, without going through the trouble of creating all new products. Um, and you can customize it with your own photos, your own taglines, your own prices, all of that. Um, again, yeah, be patient. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just warn you, it's, um, you know, the first couple of times you try and add a product, I mean, hopefully you'll be, you'll get it right off the bat, but if not, no, you're not alone. Um, and it can take a couple of tries. And then I just want to reiterate too, there's nothing you can do within this software that um, Kira and I can't fix. Um, the other uh, uh, part of the training deals with reporting. Um, so this will show you uh, your pick tickets, what you sold, you can look at, um, so for example, we have our Twitter Creek Garden has been selling since year one. So now she has five years of sales data on the Food Hub. So she can look at sales trends. She can use that for um, her succession planning, um, all those kind of things. Also under reports, we have um, labels. Um, all of your products need to um, be source identified. So they need to have um, some way of uh, identifying yourself. So some people have custom logo stickers. Some people just print out these and stick it right on the bag. So um, there's there's a lot of uh, different ways you can do this. And you can always stop by the food hub um, and take a look around to see how um, farmer different farmers are handling um, their deliveries. Um, so here's just a listing of the different reports um, that you can pull. Um, and then here's uh, what some of the labels look like. Um, you can uh, print these off and stick them right on your bags. Um, there's, yeah, or you can use a logo sticker, all kinds of different things. Um, here's what your pick list looks like. Um, it breaks it down. So this one is... Um, it tells you where to drop it off, what time, tells you how many of each, and then it also shows you your payoff, your payout. So if you participate in more than one um, food hub drop off area, you, you'll end up receiving two or more of these pick tickets. So um, you can look up here, this pick list format, um, detailed would go into like the customer names and all of that. Um, Wednesdays are our delivery day. Um, so when you come into the food hub, um, our site managers will have all of our invoices laid out um, alphabetically with um, a container. So usually a paper bag, plastic bag, um, compostable bag, I'm sorry, um, with each. So when you come in, you'll bring your products and then um, the site managers will aggregate it all into the individual orders. Um, maybe while you wait, um, if not, if it's busy, we'll just count in the products and aggregate it later because we do want to get you folks in and out as quickly as possible. Um, and if at that, so we like to count it while you're still there because mistakes um, do happen. Um, and often, you know, a lot of our producers are on the way to the market or on the way somewhere else. And, you know, oh, shoot, we're missing two bundles of carrots. And um, often the producer can just go right back out to their truck and grab more. So that's our reasoning behind um, having you guys wait while we count in the products. And it just um, makes sure we're all on the same page as well, as far as, um, you know, making sure. Um, we're not trying to shortchange anybody. Um, yeah, so right now, um, our guidance is still that we're, we're going to wear masks when we're at the food hub. Um, we will let you know um, when that changes. It seems like, um, you know, our uh, everything is changing weekly. So we will, we, as we update those policies, we'll let you know. Um, and the vendors wait um, outside of the aggregation area. So 
um, less touches, uh, more. So all our staff uh, and volunteers tend to be able to sort it out pretty quick. Um, again, yeah, we'll let you guys know if anything changes on our our COVID operations, and I will spell operations right next time. Um, so our next steps, um, you sign up for an account on our software, complete the application and read the policy manual, um, pay the membership fee, and then you can, uh, once those steps are done, we'll get your producer account set up and you can log in and start um, poking around at those training videos. Um, again, I wanted to just make sure everyone knows our operation days. We're, we're in full operation right now. All of our sites are open. Um, we had a, an amazing food hub day yesterday. I think it was the most green we've seen all year. Um, turnips are showing up, radishes, arugula, flowers. So everything is uh, in high gear right now. Um, and I am going to stop sharing my screen and we can, we can take questions or just chat about whatever. Hey, Robbie, it's Jan Rumble from Homer. Hey, um, Jan. Hi, I made it. <laughs> Yay, salmon cakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I just have a couple questions. Um, so in terms of, you know, because I, I'm not a farmer and so my, you know, be, we had talked about the coolers. Um, and so do you anticipate other people, you know, having stuff that we could group together in coolers? Because I mean, I do have a bunch of them, but then I, I was confused about, are they, are some of them going to be going to Soldovia and Anilchik? Um, even though I'm in Homer, I, that's, that's at least one question. <laughs> Oh, no, that's a great question. So um, we ask that um, when we can combine products, we do. Um, you know, we don't necessarily want oysters with, like there's some things we just can't mix due to food safety concerns. But um, if there's, you know, frozen fish going up, sure, we can put your uh, frozen um, salmon cakes. And that's just, you know, and, and it also depends on who shows up first. So um, that's something that we kind of mitigate at the, the food hub site. But um, yeah, if, and, and if for some reason there's not enough coolers, we do keep a couple on hand just in case um, folks forget them or we don't have enough to go between sites but it I it's it's always worked out for us I'll say that yeah I, I'll have enough coolers so but we they will be going to those other sites right so I should have I mean I have no idea um I am a biologist <laughs> <laughs> so this is my first attempt at, um you know but I you know I have I, obviously for everybody else I do have all my permits and stuff like that and you know I've, I've been making salmon cakes for like 25 to 30 years so um this is my attempt to share my cakes with the world but um you know they are vacuum sealed and they are um so they could be put with other things they do have a, a paper uh, label on the top that's just on the top part of it, which lists all the DEC requirements, like the the permit number and how much it weighs, and you know the lot number and how when it was put in the package and all that stuff, and what's in it because that's required too. So it's pretty beefy. I'm mm -hmm. wondering that label is that's enough. I would hope that that's enough for you guys because absolutely yes, good because it's um it's very explicit because of DEC requirements. Yeah, that sounds great and. Yeah, um, I know, so we have small orders that go over to Seldovia and Nanilchik and often like um, our, those vendors will use smaller coolers um, just because the, you know, like a lunch size cooler because they may only have two or three orders, um, that sort of thing. But especially on our Seldovia and Nanilchik, we, we definitely try to condense those coolers when we can, so. Um, we'll we'll work we'll work it out as we go along, and um, if we run into any problems, we'll we'll figure them out as we get there. Kara Kara is really handy, so I bet sounds good. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, let's see, anybody anybody else have any more questions? I know this was a, a lot of information um, all at once. And um, yeah, we have, we have many vendors that have vended for years. So they've certainly figured out the system um, and, and, it, and it's worth their while at least. I'll just say thanks for your help when I mess up. <laughs> now, like I said, uh, never, there's nothing y'all can do that uh, Karen and I can't fix. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I have uh, actually been, I've still been wondering like when I can start trying to get some of our products on um, and I saw this on the calendar, so I'm like, oh, I'm going to go see what Robbie has to say and see if I can figure this out. Um, and I was trying to figure it out while you were presenting, too. Mm -hmm. I am apparently really challenged with computers and having the darndest time. Yeah. Um, so I have an account, but I don't think it's the right kind of account. Um. Sarah, have you, are you trying, where are you trying to sell? In Anchorage? Well, that was the other thing I saw was that it looks like there's only Homer. Are you? It's Homer and Soldatna right now, but um, I'll, I think I'll get you in touch with Rachel Miller um, for the Anchorage stuff. So I'm not, I think they're going to do it again and they may be open to adding more. Um, but Seeds of Change, you guys actually already have a producer account in here from years ago when we did the trial. And I will update all that with your email address and resend it to you. Yes. Thank you. I was trying to figure out what that was. But since uh, our old manager isn't here, there's nothing I can really do to get in. I would appreciate that very much. Yeah, whenever we get off of this, I'll just do it. So it's fresh in my head and then you you and I and Rachel can connect um, maybe next week or tomorrow and figure out what they're doing um, and we'll get you rolling. Awesome, thanks, yeah. I appreciate that. No worries. Let's see, um, Monica, did you have any questions for us? Hey, Ravi. Yeah, Hi. thanks for this. I just tuned in. I'm actually driving, so I'm just like listening. Um, <laughs> but I was curious um, how like tender salad greens do with uh, the transportation and everything. Like if there's anything that farmers are doing to keep that stuff from wilting or if it just holds pretty well for just a couple hours that it's transporting yeah you know we've had very uh, you know surprisingly we've had very few um complaints about wilty vegetables we try and set up our orders in the less sunny part of the room um to keep that down um we have a couple of items like uh like uh, microgreens that the vendors actually provide a cooler for but um, wilted greens, you know, sometimes in the high summer, um, it, things get a little bit wilty, but most of our customers are pretty understanding. And then they, you know, we also say, well, you know, your kale looks a little weepy. Um, if you put it in some cold water, when you get home, um, it'll, it'll pop right back up. So we try and do a little education around that, but also, really just try to avoid it. Like when we're transporting um, products up to Soldatna, we leave our bins open. So there's a lot of airflow through it. Um, and then the other thing uh, producers do, they try and harvest it um, be right before drop off or harvest it and let it cool down either in like a, a root cellar or, you know, in the shade um, kind of a thing. So I don't have much more <laughs> besides that but that's a great question cool thanks yeah yeah i think that's all i have for now i might have more questions when i go through the um the actual like account forming and stuff but yeah 
all totally. very informative. So awesome. appreciate it. Yeah, you just reach out to us, um, and one of us will will help you um, help you with any and all of it. Awesome. Cool. I am gonna throw um, our email address so info at alaskafoodhub.org that goes to both Kira and I. Um, if you want to reach me, it's just uh, Robbie at Inlet Keeper, and then Kira is um, Alaska Food Hub at inletkeeper.org. So if there's no more questions, um, I am going to in this and I will make sure um, if you check um, probably by shortly after noon tomorrow, um, I will have both the recording and the um, PDF um, posted. I, I noticed a few spelling errors I need to fix before I post it, so. Hey, thanks, Robbie. Thanks for being so receptive and um, just responding and uh, staying on it. I, I think it's amazing and um, I'm shocked that I haven't really been buying stuff here before. I am a gardener, so I try to not buy vegetables, but I have a feeling this might be just irresistible for me. You know, a my paycheck goes to the food hub because I, I think it's a really fun way to, to buy local food and support, um, support all of our awesome farmers and salmon cake makers. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you guys. And I hope you all all have a good night. Um, again, questions, Kira and I are here for you and um, look forward to working with all y'all. All right, thank you. Thank y'all. Bye everybody. Thanks, Bye y'all.